Welcome to Engine Classes YouTube channel. In this video, we'll consider an example on properties of systems. The system being considered is y of n is equal to n into x of n. So this system is a discrete time system, and the task here is to test is this system linear, time invariant, memoryless, causal, and stable. So to consider all these five properties, we'll start with the very first one. So I would write this as linearity. So I want to test is the given system linear or not. Before we start with the properties, what we do is we'll try to understand how the system behaves. What is the nature of the system? For that I'll consider that. So let the input be x of n and the operator of the system let it be h and the output of the system is y of n. So y of n is equal to n into x of n. So now I should know how the system behaves. So what is the nature of the system? So whatever the input we feed in, it multiplies that with n and gives us y of n is equal to n into x of n. So that is the nature of the system. That is how the system behaves. Whatever I feed in, it multiplies with n and gets us the output. So to prove linearity, to consider the property of linearity, what we do is we'll consider two different inputs. So let the let the inputs be x1 of n and x2 of n. Once we consider this, what we do is we'll scale them the first input by a1 and the second input by a2. So later I'll add these two inputs and I give this to the system of operator h so that I'll get the output y of n. So what is my output equal to now? So this is the input. Input is a1 x1 of n plus a2 x2 of n. So output will be n into the input. That is a1 x1 of n plus a2 x2 of n. So this is the output. The first part of the output. So next what we do is we'll consider uh, two inputs. So let the first input be x1 of n. So what I do is I'll straight away give this to the system of operator h so that I'll get the output. I would call this as y dash of n. So what is the output now? It is n into x1 of n. So once I scale this, so after scaling this output by a1, I would get a1 n into x1 of n. Similarly, I'll consider the second input. I would call that as x2 of n. I will give this to the system of operator h and I would get the second output. I would call this as y dash of n. So what is that equal to now? It is n into x2 of n. So after scaling this by a factor a2, so this is what I get. So this is after scaling. So next step is to add these two outputs. That is y dash of n plus y double dash of n. So what do I get now? So it is a1 n x1 of n plus a2 n x2 of n. This is what I am getting. So the next task is to. So I would call the added outputs as y2 of n. So the next task is to compare y1 of n. Is that equal to y2 of n? So if I compare these two outputs, I would say that both are equal. Hence, I would say the given system, discrete time system is linear in nature. So I proved the system follows the property of linearity. So next I would consider the second property which is time invariant. So I want to test is this system time invariant or not. Time invariant means the output should not vary with the time. So the definition of time invariance is a shift in the input must lead to an identical time shift in the output. So to prove that first we'll consider the first half of the statement. I said it is a shift in the input. So input is x of n 
Shift in the input means I would consider x of n minus n naught. So now I would give this to the system of operator h and I would get the output as y of n. So what do I get now? So it is n into x of n minus n naught. So this is the first half of the statement. So I would call this as y of n is equal to n into x of n minus n naught. So next what I do is I'll consider the second half of the statement I said. Uh, shift in the input must lead to an identical time shift in the output. So it is, I have to consider shift in the output, which is y of n minus n naught. So what is this equal to? To write this, what I do is, I'll consider the expression, the very given expression, y of n is equal to x of, it is n into x of n. So to get y of n minus n naught, I have to replace in this expression, uh, every n with n minus n naught. If I do that, I would get, so first here I find n, so I'll replace that with n minus n naught. Here I have x of n, I would write this as x of n minus n naught. So I need to compare, next I need to compare y of n, is that equal to y of n minus n naught? So that is the question. A time shift in the input, is that leading to an identical time shift in the output? If I compare these two expressions, they are not equal. Hence, I would say the given system is time variant. The output is varying with the time. So it is time variant. So that is about the second property. So next we'll consider, uh, we shall consider the third property, which we are testing it for memoryless. So we want to test, is the given discrete time system memoryless or does it have any memory? So the statement was y of n equal to n into x of n. So the memoryless says that the output at any given time should depend on the input at that time only. So if I want to test it for a few of the examples, so first I would say let n equal to 1. So what is y of 1 equal to? It is 1 into x of 1. So output at time 1 depends on the input at time 1 only. Similarly I would consider say a few negative, I would say y of minus 2 equal to. What is the value? It is y of minus 2 equal to minus 2 into x of minus 2. So the output at time n equal to minus 2 must depend on, it depends on the input at x equal to minus 2. So whatever the minus 2 here it is, just the scaling factor. So output depends on input at that time only. So it doesn't depend uh, any of the past values or future values of the input. Hence the system is memoryless, it doesn't have any memory. So the fourth property, next we shall consider the fourth property, that is causality. So the task is to test, is the system causal or not? So the causality says that the output of, the output at any given time can depend on present or the past values of the input, but not on future values. So I should test whether the given system depends on any of the feature values. So the answer is clearly no. Hence I would say the given system is causal. As it doesn't depend any of the feature values, the system is causal. So now I would consider the last property which is stability. The task is to determine is this system stable or not. It is, to be precise, it is a BBO stable. That means bounded input, bounded output stable. I'll make the input bounded. Is my output also bounded? That's what I'm testing. To make it much simple, I'll make my input finite. Is my output also finite? That's what I'm testing. In case, if finite input leads to infinite output, I would say the system is unstable. So for that, what I do is I'll consider the input x of n magnitude of that, I'll make it a finite number, I'll make it a finite value, which is mx. mx is any largest number which is less than infinity. So I, in this, by writing this expression, I'm making the input finite. So what is my output? y of n. Magnitude of that is equal to, 
So I'm getting it as magnitude of n into x of n. So I can write this as magnitude of n into magnitude of x of n. So I know that x of n is a finite number. So this is finite. But what about this n? So I don't have any control on the time n and that is left independent. So that n can go up to infinity. Hence, I would say that the given system is unstable. It is unstable because of the time n. As it can go up to infinity, so we don't have any control on time. So I would say the system is unstable. So this is about the five different properties of the system. So just to brief it up, so I'll consider, I have considered the example y of n is equal to n into x of n. So I've tested it for linearity and I got the answer to be linear, s. Yes. The system is linear and I have tested this for time invariance and I got it to be time variant. And I have tested this for memoryless, yes the system is memoryless. Uh, is it causal? Yes the system is causal. And I have tested this for stability but I got the answer to be unstable. So this is all about the properties of the system. Thanks for watching.